Hello. Well, if you're waiting for part three of the uh, Worm Servo um, series, uh, I've ordered some magnets, but I haven't had time to test them yet, so that'll have to wait until next week. Uh, meanwhile, I had a problem with my uh, SC2 Chinese mini lathe, and um, the thing that I did to correct it turned out to make it worse. So I then had to do some further corrections. Um, see what you think. I had an accident with the mini lathe uh, yesterday. Um, I was um, turning a piece of Dorin, a Dorin bush like this, not this one, but actually a smaller one. And, and I had put this piece of stainless steel rod inside it just so that I could clamp the chuck down without squashing the Dorin. And anyway, um, somehow the workpiece flew out of the chuck and this um, stainless steel rod got caught on the cutting tool and it, it got bent as you should be able to see yes it got bent well so quite a lot of force must have been applied to something somehow so I chucked up various work pieces just to see whether the chucks were still working properly and I discovered something quite alarming which I hadn't noticed before which is that and I don't know if you can see this that is a three thou shim that I can get in up to see there are, are teeth on here Maybe they, something underneath it that makes it a bit better I can get a three thou shim past that one and this one I can get a two thou shim past yeah, that's two thou. And this one perhaps not two. What's that? What's this is one and a half. And get one and a half past that one. So it's one and a half thou. So these leading teeth on the front of the chuck are not engaging. Well, I hadn't noticed that before. I don't see how I could fail to have noticed that. I don't think I've used this lathe enough to have caused, caused this problem with wear. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take these um, out and just put a straight edge along there and see if I can t test it like that. So here are the three jaws out of the chuck. And we measured one and a half thou, three thou and two thou um, separation between the workpiece and the top, the outside jaw. Um, testing it here against my Michutoyo straight edge um, I find that it's less because I can still get if I hold it like that I can still get a two thou shim in there but I cannot get I cannot get a th oh, or maybe I can almost. Not, no, I can't get a three thou one. So they're all going to be slightly less uh, outside the chuck, which is, which is understandable because when you tighten the 
uh, jaws in in the chuck onto the workpiece, uh, they tend to go like that. So I had uh, some time ago I measured accurately what the run out on this chuck was uh, using this 17 millimeter diameter uh, ground uh, bar. Um, so I'm going to reinstate that and just see once this bar goes right to the back so it doesn't really matter whether the front of the jaws is uh, touching or not but um, I'm just going to repeat those measurements it's 0.05 isn't it just under 0.05 which is too far. Um, I don't know if you can see that, probably not. So that's exactly the same as I got before. Now I don't have a tool purse grinder, um, so uh, I was wondering what to do and at this point I got uh, seduced by an idea put forward by Steve Barton at Solid Rock Machine Shop, link in description, that um, you could use lumps of plastic like this to push the jaws apart and then bore out the jaws uh, with a conventional boring bar. Jaws uh, cleaned up and if you got a good machine, again which this is not, you got a good chuck which this is not, this process works really good. You'll be amazed at how accurate uh, your holding power will come uh, when you start tightening your work up from here on out. But if you use a CBN, a carbide bar like that, I think a steel bar and a short uh, would probably work fine if it's a bigger steel bar. If you're a smaller diameter, you want to go with uh, uh, carbide if possible. You can true these jaws up. You're going to do a lot better job than you're going to be able to do with a two pulse grinder. The so I bought this very expensive carbide boring bar, um, which is a ridiculous overkill for this Chinese mini lathe. But I just thought um, it was one which would actually take this CBN insert. More to the point, this this insert is A, it's CBN, so it will cut hardened uh, steel, uh, which the jaws ought to be, but in fact I now know aren't, uh, and B, it's specifically designed for an interrupted cut. So I thought, the, the insert cost 20 quid. Um, I thought it was worth paying just to get the, the, the chuck right. Um, the boring bar was just a luxury. Uh, which might come in handy if I ever get a decent lathe. I didn't fancy using the lumps of plastic to push the jaws apart um, because when I tried it on my lathe it looked to me as if they were going to fly out of the chuck and uh, uh, as they got cut into by the boring bar would probably cease to push the jaws apart uh, adequately. So I tried something else. So what I've actually done is I've drilled a hole in each chuck jaw in exactly the same place like that in the process discovering that the jaws are not hardened and I can fit these 4mm dowels in there And then I made this steel ring Just goes like that and now it is pushing each jaw outwards. Just checking that the tool is exactly on centre. Right. So I'm going to touch off on um, the second tooth in there which isn't worn. Just 
there. I'll put that on naught. So we'll give it 0.025 and see what happens. and I still think I need to go a bit further. So this is another two thou. what they look like after. I think I've got them all except for, well, I've got this one a bit but there's this very small jaw there, um, a very small tooth. Anyway, they all seem to have been uh, cut. I don't know if you can see that. This is the same bar I was testing it on before. And this jaw had one and a half, I could put a one and a half thou thing through here, I can't, sorry, I could put a two thou thing through here, this is a one and a half thou, it won't go in. There's no, actually I can't get anything in, they're, they're all now working properly. So that's good. Well that's the good news. Uh, the bad news however is that the run out has got worse, I hoped that it would get better. It was already quite good, but I hoped it would get better. So I've got this bar exactly the same position as I normally measure run out in a live center. And um, the run out now is 12 times 0.01 millimeters, which is about double what it was before. So that's a success, not. So the run out on the body of the chuck is 0.05, um, which is what we measured here before, before I <laughs> reground these. Chuck jaws. 
I don't believe this. This is different every time I measure it now. It's now 0.19, which is the biggest ever. Enough to drive you bloody bonkers. Which is driving me bonkers. So if I put the test piece back in and do this up very gently until the outside tooths are engaging, I think you can see that there's still considerable movement at the back on the back teeth which indicates that now whereas before the teeth were bell mouthed like that now they seem to be the opposite I don't know what the, op the correct word for that is but they're gripping at the front but not at the back um, if I just tighten it up properly that effect goes away but so we can confirm that by sliding a piece of paper under the jaw doing it up tight One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the six jaws. When fully done up, they are all engaging. Or maybe the two in the middle are not quite engaging. So that's jaw number one. Bloody difficult to hold all four of these things in place at the same time. I think that's okay. This is jaw number two. three. I think they're all pretty damn straight. So any effect of not gripping at the, gripping at the front and gripping at the back must be due to the, the jaws being like that by default. As one closes them down, they get more like that, I suppose. Well, the fact that the, the teeth on those jaws don't grip exactly uniformly, despite the fact that the jaws are all completely, the teeth are all flat, um, that's just a matter of um, convenience. It doesn't actually affect the run out as such. So the run out is affected by the way I've ground, re ground these jaws. Um, and I've got to get to the bottom of that. So we reground them, and the run out is six times worse. No, three times worse. It was uh, the, the run out is three times worse. It was 0.05 or 0.06, and it's now up to 0.18. Um, we've got to get to the bottom of that. Uh, what I think I'll do is, this test bar, is, which is a ground bar, and it is properly round, uh, but it's a bit long. I think I'll cut off a bit of it from this end to make a short alternative test bar. And then I will re-drill the centres at both ends of the, each of these bars. Um, after centering them in the forejaw to get them absolutely, the centres absolutely right in the geometrical centre, not just, of course, if you, if you drill in the lathe, you're always going to get a hole that's on the um, axis of rotation of the spindle. But I also want this hole to be in the centre of this circle. So that's what I'll do to start off with. 
Right, I think I've got that as good as I can possibly get it. I think that's within 0 0.005 of a millimetre. Right, we'll um Time to do this. I'm doing now is at the moment there's 18 which is 16 and a half that's 0.16 and a half millimeters run out on this and I've, I've just tested it so this is the high point here on this Jaw. Don't do that. That's the high point. And I've tested it by rotating this by 90 degrees. It doesn't make any difference. The high point still occurs on this jaw. Which means that these two jaws need to be filed down a little bit by hand. I wonder if that would work. So I've got an aluminium oxide slipstone here which I haven't actually used yet um, for any purpose. Um, and I'm just wondering if I were to do it like that. Whether I could take one and a half thou off there without totally buggering everything. Well, I've given it two, those two jaws, two goes with the aluminium oxide slipstone, and it's now down to from 16 to 7. So that's an improvement. So I think we'll do a little bit more. This is hardly a precision operation, is it? So I'm just holding it on here, keeping it as flat as I can. disappointing because after doing a bit, bit more hand grinding it's now gone back to ten or is that nine? Yeah. Yeah ten. And it was seven a minute ago wasn't it? And I'm putting this in at exactly the same place. Let's surely it doesn't make that much difference does it? Oh, it's basically the same. So, that is annoying. Well, two more hand grinding sessions later. We've got it to point oh two, which is good. Now, is that repeatable? Rotate this a bit. Like we can. 
on. Not exactly repeatable, is it? Because that is... Point oh four. Still acceptable though, isn't it? Let's try that another time. What I have three and a half. Well, that last one was 70 millimeters in diameter. This uh, piece of ground uh, steel is um, 25 millimeters in diameter. So that is, is the same. 0.04. Yeah. So that's not too bad. At least I've got the chuck pack into actually a better state than it was before I started. Because the jaws are now no longer bell mouthed and the run out is no more than there is on the spindle. And 0.01 millimetres less than I measured before when I, before I started the whole thing. And another interesting thing about this is that uh, the high point is actually exactly opposite, or almost opposite, where it was before, when, it, when I was using, opposite to where it was when I was using the 17mm one. So what we're looking at must be um, not problems in the jaws here, but problems in the scroll. Well, I'm not going to file that. <laughs> You'll be happy to know. <laughs> Just for completeness, this is a 6mm diameter shaft and the run out is 0.01. I suppose the smaller the shaft the less the run out perhaps. So I'm going to call that good.